What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to my comprehensive analysis and review of Duo Duma. I'll be going over a lot of the builds that you can run on him for different game modes and Duo Duma is a very important unit in my opinion who's gonna be impactful as a top tier far safe tank. So this time around he is a red armor dragon with 195 BST and he has got ghostly lanterns as his preferred weapon. This weapon gives him minus on special cooldown, which is really great for making Glimmer a one turn special that he can retaliate back with, and he can also run Aegis with Hardy Fighter and also Sacred Cowl. And if he's above 25% HP, then he can get a bunch of effects that is going to be helping him in the combat. So first of all, he can get plus 6 attack in combat and inflict minus 6 attack debuff on the foe during the combat. He also has partial null follow up, the defensive version, which can allow him to stop the auto follow up attacks. And then he also has follow-up negation on top of it. So Duma is not very fast, so having these kinds of effects is definitely pretty nice, especially against some opponents. But a lot of the meta threats who just have no follow-up are going to be able to still double him because he's quite slow. And finally, he's got a resistance check, and if he has got more resistance than the opponent, then he's going to be able to decharge their special cooldown by one before their first attack hits in the combat. So this is not really anything new that we have seen. We have seen this before on Brave Tiki. So essentially, this allows him to be rather dead eye and lethality proof, especially like when they are pre-charged specials. So you can just decharge the special and not really eat a big hit and die. So that is going to be extremely powerful on an armor. So on Brave Tiki, it's already pretty good, but the thing is that she was not an armor. But here, Duma is an armor, and he has got access to Hardy Fighter defensive specials. So you can already imagine the defensive combos that he can do with this kind of effect to make Duma really, really bulky. But again, this does not mean that he is going to be some invincible god. Even if you decharge some opponent's special, they could still just trigger their special on their double, or if they just have the Bright Catria Triangle Adept. So you still have to watch out for those matchups and like all dragons he does have the adaptive damage against the range opponents. Being the power of god, Duma does have the highest attack in the game as of right now at base 46. It doesn't exactly have a super boon which I'm kind of surprised with. Instead it does have super bane and then he has got really amazing bulk at base 40 defense and base 43 resistance. So resistance is extremely important for Duma for meeting the resistance check in his weapon to decharge the opponent's special and also for getting damage reduction out of Dragon Wall. So resistance is easily going to be one of the most important stats for Duma along with his attack stat. His speed is going to be his dump stat but still overall he's going to be functioning as a really good slow armor tank. Duma's base kit is also pretty nice. He has got Distant Ferocity, which is basically the attack version of Distant Dart or Distant Stance. So in the enemy phase, you can get plus 5 attack and also Distant Counter. So this is going to be an upgrade of the usual Distant Counter that you can run. And this is going to be really helpful on a lot of Vantage and Brave Weapon users like Shadows of Valentia Pala and Keaton, who usually function in a Vantage playstyle in something like Etherate's Offense. And also armor units like uh, Winter Ephraim and Summer Edelgard definitely want to have this because they have a brave weapon in the enemy phase as well. So that allows them to just kill the opponents before they can counter attack. So this is going to be the best slotty skill for them. And Summer Edelgard is also one of the best far safe tanks in the entire game. So a lot of Edelgard fans are definitely going to be giving this fodder to her. Duma also has Dragon Wall, which can give him 40% damage reduction at max. So again, resistance is going to be important. And he comes with Woeful Upheaval as his preferred skill. So just like the usual Upheaval, this actually does 7 damage to all opponents on the map on turn 1. And this is really, really strong because you're going to be able to just chip down a lot of the opponents and even break a lot of their skills. So many units do require to be at 100% HP for some of their skills or weapons. And, you know, ideal skills are quite important. So just keep in mind that Duma is going to be breaking their ideal skills right off the bat. So they're not going to be able to get the max offenses or the max usage out of something like an ideal skill. So definitely a very, very good effect. And now this could be used in any kind of game mode and also in Aetherate's defense. So really good effect and then the second effect of this preferred skill is the fact that he can get more damage reduction depending on the difference between the attack and foe's attack and their max HP and their current HP multiplied by 3. So 
it does have the formula, but it's honestly pretty easy to get the uh, damage reduction out of it. And this can scale up to 30%. So along with Dragon Wall and this damage reduction from his upheaval, he's able to get 58% damage reduction on foe's first attack. So that is really good, and then he can just retaliate back and kill them. So Dragon Wall does give you the damage reduction on all of the hits, but Woeful of Evil's damage reduction is only on foe's first attack, so keep that in mind. And then finally, the most important effect out of this skill is the fact that it has got far save built into it. And I really love this because you don't really have to spend, you know, any kind of fodder on Duma as he already has this in his base kit. So for a lot of people and a lot of us who didn't really pull for too many far save armor units, this is definitely nice, like for saving up our resources if we do pull Duma. And his duo skill is also something that makes him really, really strong and impactful, especially in summoner duels because in summoner duels, dual skills are very important and can change the match and also really decide your viability. So the dual skill of Duma works in a huge range of 5 rows and columns and it can neutralize any kind of visible penalties on himself and all of his allies, restores 30 HP and also gives the dull all effect to all allies and himself for one turn. So neutralizing the visible penalties is going to be a huge thing because if people are running a lot of debuffing skills and of course duo Thor with their exposure, then you're going to be able to get rid of the exposure with this uh, you know, duo skill and that can really change the matchup and be really clutch um, at times because Thor is not going to be able to get that extra damage with exposure as we have erased the um, you know, the penalty that he had. Restoring 30 HP is also really good because this is like self-healing without really running any kind of special. And many times there are matchups where you might have to, you know, just um, trade off your unit by doing some damage to some kind of raid boss or really hard to kill opponent. Um, and in that case, like their trade-off is going to be amounting to nothing if you can just heal up the HP on your allies and on Duma himself after he can survive. But if he can survive, then you just use your duo button and he's going to be a lot more healthy. And uh, the opponent probably used their special or something and now they're a lot weaker. And if they took the hit from his distant counter, then yeah, they're probably not going to be surviving a second one because his attack stat is... And the dull all effect, which we have seen before on like uh, Valentine Lucina and also Veluria can give this. Having this in the duo button pretty much means that you're going to be able to uh, kind of just counter duo dogger pretty easily because of this effect. And also a lot of strategies that rely on, um, you know, insane amount of bonus doublers through their weapon, through the Sacred Seal, through Ledger and Elliewood. So raid boss team compositions are pretty common, um, especially in Summoner Duels S. So against them, Duma can, you know, just provide the opportunity for your allies to not really care about any of their visible buffs and just, you know, attack them as is. And this is also going to be helpful as, uh, you know, Duo Dogger's Pathfinder can provide you the, you know, the buffs to all of their allies. So this is going to be really helpful in that matchup. And it is also going to be helping you against Duo Chrom because he does get plus his attack after he uses Change Fate. So this is something that you could activate to survive a bit better. And this duo button is going to be absolutely amazing when there is Rallying Cry Captain Skill available in Summoner Duels. And uh, in Summoner Duels, duo skill is mainly where it is going to be useful. And Aetherate's offense and defense, you know, you're really not going to be using it. The AI cannot use this on Aetherate's defense and in offense. Most good teams are going to be having duo hindrance, which is going to be not easily snipeable. Uh, but still, they can really help you with the fact that in the end game, if you have destroyed their uh, duo units or killed them, then Duma can pretty much get that second lease of life with this healing without really running healing tower or a healer. And on Aetherate's defense, there are going to be another duo unit uh, that are going to be enabling duo hindrance, and they're probably the hardest to kill duo unit. So that is really good for preventing the usage of the duo skill on your opponents. Like all dual units, they also have the dual skill built into this and this can allow them to score like a 200 BST unit in game modes like Arena. So when you consider the fact that we have got 300 SP slot B skill and 300 SP sacred seal distant counter, then <laughs> Duma pretty much scores like a 210 BST unit. So Duma is the highest scoring unit in the game as of this moment. 
yeah, he's incredibly good for arena investment um, if you really care about that. So having explained all of his effects and his duo skill and his weapon, now you have a lot better understanding of how he can function and why he's so good as he is. In my opinion, he's easily one of the best far safe tanks in the entire game for pretty much most of the content, even for the high rank matches in like ether raids and summoner duels, because I have tested him out and a lot of my friends have done that as well. And I definitely think that he is like top five save armor um, at the very least. And I think that he also, you know, might be top three save armor. I personally do think that he's in the leagues of Brave Hector and, you know, Ascended Edun, but just because he's such a good unit and just because I'm talking positively about him does not mean that he's an invincible tank. He still has his weaknesses. The first one is going to be the armor effective damage, which is always going to be annoying. So Duochrome, despite being... Um, you know, a unit that you can handle, it is still going to be a very, like, sensitive matchup in a sense. So you need some skills in that aspect to survive him. Because he can do so much damage even without proccing his, like, dead eye. And another thing is that the decharging in his weapon does not apply to the AoE specials. Which means that Duo Thor can basically shred him with that AoE special. So you would have to play well so that you don't really take the AoE damage. And then you would be able to tank Duo Thor. And the Dalol effect is, you know, very, very important when it comes to tanking the AoE special of Duo Thor in many, many situations. Uh, because you're going to be able to survive after taking that AoE damage. And Duo Thor also has, like, resistance, which is going to be rivaling Duma many times. Um, so, like, he's not going to be able to get much of the damage reduction with Dragon Wall if you choose to run that. Not to mention, we also have uh, Legendary Deidre and Legendary Julia, which are extremely powerful blue dragon slayers. So having that weapon strangle advantage is going to be making them a really horrendous matchup for Duma, especially like Legendary Deidre. Um, so yeah, you just cannot really do much damage to them because of their null adaptive. And they also have the, you know, color advantage and the dragon effective damage. So yeah, there are weaknesses of Duo Duma, but in my opinion, he's like really clearly a top 5 armor unit. One of the best ones at this role but has a lot of options that you can run to make him into a very, very solid tank. This is a very unique unit that we have seen who has this decharging in his weapon. A lot of armor units at times rely super heavily on their hardy fighter and defensive special to actually survive the Deadeye and Lethality. And when they get Pulse Smoke down or something like that, they're, you know, pretty much going to be dying. But Duma is an exception in that regard. And I think that he is pretty much the best Aether Rage defense uh, far safe tank that he can run. I'll elaborate more on that as we move on to the builds and quite an impactful unit, which we are going to be seeing, at least from my experience and from what, um, you know, I was able to deduce from the usage I've done with him and I've actually faced him as well. <laughs>
with this attack stat, he's going to be able to one shot a lot of a lot of initiators who are you know doing this kind of hit and run with lethality or dead eye. So that is why I think that he is the best far save that he could run on Etherate's defense. Um, a huge problem for them is the fact that they could just die if they don't have pre-charge special. But Duma is a lot less likely to do that because of the decharging. And not to mention you can just bolster his uh, survivability by running Hardy Fighter and Sacred Cowl. And that is very powerful on top of the decharging in his weapon. And the reason why Sacred Cowl is kind of recommended when you run Distant Counter is because um, if someone attacks you, you soak that attack with Sacred Cowl and then Duma can retaliate back to them and then he can charge up his Sacred Cowl. And if they double him, then again, he's going to be getting that damage reduction. Of course, this is going to be falling apart if the opponent has got some kind of fire sweep weapon like Summer Lin or they're running water sweep with Ledgering Alm and, you know, they just triggered their special on the second hit. Um, and a lot of them just have Null Guard, so even if you run Mirror Stance, you're not going to be able to, uh, you know, really survive that unless you purposely keep Sacred Cowl for the second initiation. But yeah, overall, this is something that you can do, and Distant Defense 4 is also a really good skill that you can run on Duma. And, and Distant Defense 4 is also a really top tier option for Duma slot A, which you could get from the Divine Codes. Um, so this doesn't really provide you with the guard, but it does provide you with the buff neutralization. And in the light season, everyone and their mom are going to be buffing up their units with Peony and all of that. So it does help you, and in either rate's defense, the AI is not exactly going to be using the duo skill to activate the dull all effect. So that's why Distant Defense 4 is helpful. You can also use them in Summoner Duels S with uh, Dragon Wall and Distant Defense build. And in Summoner Duels S, you can pre-charge a special by using Duochrom, Asker, Raphael, and some of the other, you know, pre-charging support units. So by doing this, you're going to be able to get two forms of damage reduction. One in Sacred Cowl, which is not pierceable by Deadeye or Lethality, and then you have Dragon Wall. So it is dynamic in nature, and if you don't have Hardy Fighter, then this is definitely something that you can run on him for sure. This in Defense 4 might seem a bit redundant with his Dull All Duo skill, uh, but keep in mind that it could only be used once and it does take an action. Um, so having Distant Defense 4 can help you in the Duo Dogger matchup and also against Duo Thor um, and so many of the other matchups. So Distant Defense 4 is actually not a bad option whatsoever. Even though, um, you know, mostly he's going to be dying to specials. So I guess you could just not care about that and run Distant Defense 4. That is also a way of building him up and it could still work out honestly because Duo Duma is pretty solid. Uh, it's just that I personally like Mirror Stance a bit more, so that's why this is the Summoner Duel's R build. And Aegis is there so that he take the least amount of damage from Duochrome. Um, Duochrome is still going to be doing quite a bit of damage, and with Aegis and front loading this kind of high damage reduction, you're going to be able to, you know, not be that low on HP, and then you can just use this Duo button to heal him up to back to full HP, and be a really annoying unit for a lot of your opponents. Uh, but again, definitely watch out for Summer Thors, and <laughs> Summer Lins if they're going to be used. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely going to be using this kind of build for Summoner Duels R. I do like Mirror Stance here because um, if the opponent has Triangle Attack from Bradle Catria, at least they cannot trigger their special on the second hit. Uh, but yeah, Duo Chrome supported by Bradle Catria is going to be a painful unit. So you'll have to play a bit more aggressively um, and also play accordingly. So you could do that. And, you know, people have been dealing with Bradle Catria teams for a long time. So he doesn't have the luxury of Brave Hector and Ascended Edun of having that Null Armor weakness. So you definitely need to play accordingly against a Bradle Catri and Duo Chrome combined. Finally, you could also use him in Arena as a max scoring unit. And like I said, he's the highest scoring unit in the entire game as of right now. So he can run Dragon's IR4 as the tier 4 300 SP slot B skill. And this is really good because it can provide him the guaranteed follow-up attack and also give him a player phase. Even though like <laughs> he has one movement, let's be honest, you're not going to be using his player phase much, but still it's really nice against the impact effects. And uh, I don't really think that Dragon's Wrath is that good uh, on him because even though it does help with the one-shot build, um, unfortunately cannot really trigger a special like Glimmer or Moonbow here. Uh, Blue Flame is the best one that you've got. So unless you have some Wordbreaker support or something like that, um, <laughs> Dragon's Ire is definitely something I prefer a bit more. Um, and Distant Defense 4 is also something that you can run here because people are going to be having the rally skills. Uh, but I think that in Arena, you can freely use the Duo button um, since you're just playing against an AI and not an actual human like Summoner Duels. So that could work out and you can still get the guard effect from Mirror Stance. Duma does lag the guaranteed follow-up attack, but uh, most of the time he can one-shot a lot of the threats. 
Um, and I can actually see some people trying to counter that by running attack resistance ideal on their duo chrome so that he doesn't get one shot. So that is going to be interesting to see. Um, and a lot of times he can easily one shot the opponents despite um, not really having an attacking skill like in distant defense 4 which provides you attack. Um, and the thing with Duma is that you really want to double down on his survival because the decharging of his weapon is so good. So if you can run something like Dragon Wall, Hardy Fighter, instead of having the guaranteed full up attack, your survival is going to be pretty nice. And nowadays I think I really, um, I really, really like the survival of the saved tanks a lot more than their kill potential uh, many times. And for Duma, he does have good kill potential even without the guaranteed follow up attack. And survival is going to be the main thing which Duma really excels at. So I personally find it a lot better um, to just double down on his bulk and his survival so that he doesn't die. Because <laughs> you're going to be losing a ladder if he dies in Ether Raid's defense. And you're going to be losing your savior in summoner duels if he dies. So that's why I really feel like survival is quite important. Um, so yeah, that is going to be my in-depth analysis of Duma. Definitely a unit which I really, really like a lot and quite unique. So make sure to share this video with your friends if they're thinking of pulling him up or if they want to build them up. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, then please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps you tremendously. And if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support me directly by using Super Thanks or by becoming a YouTube member down below. And for more fave videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Precharge, Lethality and Deadeye against Duo Duma. So that's all. See you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.